hunters, fishers and gatherers. Many tribes and castes on the mainland of India live by hunting, fishing or gathering. But they do not depend upon these exclusively for satisfying their needs. The aboriginal inhabitants of the Andaman Islands, however, depend upon these entirely for their livelihood. They have no trade relations with others and are so much isolated from one another that the Ongi of Little Andaman do not understand the language of the Jarawa of the Great Andaman or the inhabitants of the North Sentinel Island, all of which are close by. Each of these groups satisfies all its needs completely with the help of local resources and exercises considerable ingenuity in maintaining themselves on these islands. Although technologically they are very poorly equipped. The Andaman Islanders are small statured, dark colored, kinky haired people with beautifully proportioned bodies. Anthropologists regard them as belonging to the Negrito race, physically akin to the Samang of the Malay Peninsula and the East Sumatra and the Eta of the northernmost Philippine island, namely Luzon. On the whole, the Antamanese either live near the coast where they depend principally on fishing or deeper within the forest where there is more hunting. There is no large game in the forest and no carnivores of large size. Pigs are plentiful and their meat and fat is relished by the Antamanese. Some years ago, the government introduced spotted deer in a few islands. They have multiplied greatly. But it is curious that the Andamanese do not hunt these animals at all. Some time ago, when two Jarawa young men were accidentally arrested by the local inhabitants and kept in detention at Port Blair for a few days, they were offered several kinds of meat. They smelt and rejected them. But when pig's meat was offered, they, were, they went into excitement. Several years ago, when the author landed near a Jarawa communal hut, he saw within it heads of pigs which had been killed, carefully cleaned and decorated with strips of cane, and displayed conspicuously as trophies within the hut itself. This is also true of the Ongi of Little Antaman, but in one communal hut of the Jarawa, an antler was found which seemed to have been ground down at one end. Nothing else connected with deer was found in any of the other two Jarawa huts which were also visited. The Andamanese seldom fish with nets. They use bows and arrows and spears for the purpose. There are coral reefs around some of the islands where the water is shallow and crystal clear. It is easy to spot fish and turtles from their canoes in shallow waters. While turtles eggs can be collected easily from the beaches of a few of the lonely islands. Shellfish of various kinds and crabs are also gathered for food but it is interesting that so far as the Ongi are concerned they do not shoot birds for meat although the bird population is not small. It has been suggested that they do not do so for fear of losing their arrows in the thick vegetation which covers the island. So far as the arrows of the Jarawa are concerned, those which they have sometimes used against outsiders have been found to be tipped by some kind of hardwood. But they appreciate the use of iron and on this light try to steal bits of the metal from the cottages of those who have settled down as peasants in the jungle. It is said that the earlier used to collect iron from the wreckages of ships flung 
upon the coast. The food which the Andamanese eat by simple boiling is never enriched by salt. If meat cooked with the salt is offered to them, they reject it forthwith. Honey is one of their favorite foods. And from January to March, they spend a long time in gathering honey from hives. There is some kind of leaf called tongue, the juice of which is mixed with the saliva and besmeared over the body. This prevents the bees from stinging men who come to loot their hives. An investigation spread over a month in December 1963 and January 1964 by the Anthropological Survey of India revealed some interesting facts about the food habits of the Ongay. The average intake of food proved to be 2.34 pounds per man per day. Proteins consisting of pigs, meat, fish, turtles, eggs, crabs and bivalves constituted 1.78 pounds. Carbohydrates consisting of root crops and tubers 0.50 pound and fruits and honey 0.03 pound. When food is abundant from the hunt, the onke even consume 6 to 7 pounds in a day and then may go without food for a day or more until they are hungry again. They are also capable of going without food for 2 or 3 days in succession if none is available. In this respect, they are somewhat like the big carnivores of the Chota Nagapur forest. There is another feature of their food habits which is interesting. In one of the villages studied, the number of men and women during the period under investigation fluctuated between 16 and 60, in the second between 41 and 102. It all depended upon how many came to share the feast. There was apparently no quarrel over who should join and how the food was to be divided. Everything seemed to belong to everybody and one could eat as much as one needed. The Andamanis are one of the very few people in the world who use fire but do not know how to produce it. They have therefore to tend the fire very carefully in a country subject to a rainfall of 150 inches and where they live in huts thatched with leaves and grass. The Andamanis practically have no pottery but use containers hollowed out of wood. They make fine baskets and now the government have started presenting them with iron buckets, aluminium vessels and tin canisters. Axes are also left as presents for the Jarawa and although they make themselves chaos when anybody approaches them, there is abundant proof that they make use of these presents very effectively in cutting down big trees. We do not know very much if they preserve any food except honey or smoked pig's fat. But during a visit to a Jarawa settlement from which the men promptly disappeared as our boat approached it through the coral reefs, an interesting thing was discovered. Between two trees there was a fairly long strip of cane on which about a dozen sting rays had been hung up to dry. The intestines had been removed while the fish had been strung through the ice. The fish had become quite hard by drying and the line was stretched from north to south so that sun's rays could beat upon them in full. Not very much is known about the Andamani social organization except what has been recorded about the dwindling tribe of the great Andamani studied by Professor A.R. Radcliffe Brown, whose book was first published in 1922. Of course, anthropologists have information about the various subdivisions among the tribe based on differences in language. It is also known that many of the small local groups 
combine in hunting and festivity and there is also no bar to marriage between neighboring but distinguishable local groups the family consisting of then wife and children forms the most important social unit there is no trace of what is technically known as a clan a few of the local groups may be said to constitute a tribe subject to their elders but not with any well defined political authority radcliffe brown has recorded if one person injured another it was left to the injured on to seek vengeance if he wished any and if he tired the only painful result of anti social actions was loss of the esteem of others this in itself was a punishment that the antimanies with their great personal vanity would feel keenly and it was in most instances sufficient to prevent such actions for the rest good order depended largely on the influence of the more prominent men and women the antimanies loved dancing and when visitors reach little antiman with presents some entertainment of this kind is offered to them they hardly wear any clothes except those which are now being given to them by others a woman's garment consists of a waistband and an ornamental tuft of vegetable fibers suspended in front they are however very fond of decorating their bodies with ornamental geometrical designs painted with colored earth gray yellow or red mixed with fat or spittel we shall close with an interesting observation made by s boss regarding the landman ratio among this hunting and gathering tribe of little antiman the area of this island is 270 square miles in 1964 the population of the onge was found to be 132 plus another perhaps 10 or 15 more who might have been overlooked while they were out hunting in other parts of the island of the total is taken as 150 then the density of the arm per square mile is 0.56 or roughly every person has at his command 1.8 square miles it was also found that the land which can support a man with food in the forested interior for 9 months is sufficient for him for 12 months if he lives on the coast for the sea offers him a greater store of food if he is skilled enough to utilize it the population of this primitive tribe has however registered a decline the ongi population according to the census department was 129 in 1961 112 in 1971 97 in 1981 and 101 that is unpublished in 